Grace and peace of God our Father and our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. When we look at this world and we try to envision how it all came about and what it is for us and the decisions that we need to make because of what this world is to us and because of what God has done for us. Where do we look? You see, we are in a world that is beautiful and amazing, but the world that we are in is not what we worship. We worship the creator of this world. And there's not a better way to start than in John, the Apostle John, who writes, In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was God, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. All things were made through him, and without him there was not anything made that was made. In him was life, and the life was the light of men. The light shines in the darkness, and the darkness has not overcome it. So when we step back and look at this amazing world and look at what God has led us by his grace to know and to understand and to believe and to follow, what is the message? What is the message about life? What is the message about living? I'd like to show you again the video clip that we had at the beginning. We had some interruptions and some things that weren't working quite right, but I was planning on showing it anyway. So, But I want you to look at this as a graphic artist wanted to show us what life is like. And kids, there's a ball. It's actually a circle. It starts off. And watch what that circle does. Let's take a look. There was a woodcarver. His name was Benito. He lived centuries ago. And he had remarkable skill as far as carving wood and making images that looked just like the people that he used as patterns. And even very early, in the, in the early age, when he was apprenticeship, his skill was so obvious that his mentor said, I can teach you no more. And even at a very young age, he became very popular. Popular not only with the common, with the townspeople who would come in and would say, oh, that's who, that's, that's, that is George, that's, that's, that is after somebody I know. But even more so than that, his skill was such that people from afar came and marveled and supported him by buying and cherishing those images of life that he created. As he grew a little bit older, he got married. He was married. And he had a child. And the child was a girl that was the answer to his dreams. He and his wife cherished this child. And this child would come to 
the work place where he was at and would observe him and see what he was doing and how he was making the different images and would ask, how can you do this? What, what, do you, what, what has given you this? And he said, you see, you place the chisel, the wood knife, you place them on the wood, and the image comes out. He says, that's by the gift of God, the skill that he has given me. But what I do is because of who has made me. Very secretly, he made that child a puppet which you can manipulate with the strings, mandolin, and you could make it move back and forth. And he kept it as a secret and surprised, surprised his daughter with this gift. And she looked at this gift. And she could make it move as he taught her. And it was it brought joy to her and to all of those that watched what she was doing. And it was a gift, a special gift for her. Which as she grew up, she gave to her daughter. And her daughter gave to her daughter. And her daughter gave to her daughter. That particular story leads us into an idea of what it is like to create. We just really can't understand how it was that God was able to do this, what he did, out of nothing. And when you look at the creation story, when you look at how he did this, he comes to this conclusion, Genesis 1:31, and God saw everything that he had made, and behold, it was very good, and there was evening, and there was morning, the sixth day, and God saw that everything was good. Now, in the narrative of the creation, we go through it, and we see that each time God looked at what he had created, he uttered those words. Let's go through that real quickly. The first time is in verse 3, Genesis 1. Let there be light, and there was light, and God saw that the light was good. And God then divided the waters, and God called the dry land earth, and the waters that were gathered together he called seas, and God saw that it was good. And on that earth he planted the plants. The earth brought forth vegetation, plants yielding seed according to their own kind, and bearing trees, bearing fruit in which is their seed, and according to its kind. And God saw that it was good. And then he brought the sun and the moon to rule over the day and over the night and to separate the light from darkness. And God saw that it was good. And on that earth... God created the great sea creatures and every living creature that moved with which the waters swarm according to their kinds and every winged bird according to its kind and God saw that it was good. And God made the beasts of the earth according to their kinds and livestock according to their kinds and everything that creeps on the ground according to its kind and God saw that it was good. So God created man in his own image, and in the image of God, he created him. Male and female, he created them. And finally, as, as our text reads, And God saw everything that he had made, and behold, it was very good, and there was evening, and there was morning, and that was the sixth day. Seven times. Seven times. I think you get the point. We get the point that it was good. Now, in this particular situation, as it was, we, were, we, man and woman, were made in his image. And as it was, sin entered into this world and destroyed the perfection. But yet it is good. The only time that God said it was not good, remember that? Was when he said man should not be alone. And so he changed that. And he made woman. And man was not alone. And man and woman came together in an intimate fashion, in a beautiful fashion. And yes, sin entered the world. But the beauty of the man and woman and the intimacy and what is created, not always, but what is created through marriage as a gift of God, is life. Brand new life. 
And we have some brand new life. We're little children. And we have some that are not so brand new. And you me included. But we are all children of God. And it was good. And it was good. And so when we look at the big decisions of this world, it starts off is that we do not worship the creation. We admire it. We acknowledge it. We say it's fantastic. We revel in it. We get excited about it. We march to the mountaintop and, and declare that we are supreme over all, at least unless those are, other mountains are a little bit higher. Yes, we do that, but we are not worshiping. As Christians, as believers in God, by God's grace, we worship the Creator. Now, when we worship the Creator, it then changes who makes the final decision, or better said, it changes how decisions are made concerning life. Now, this is meant not to be a judgmental past, judging on past things that have happened in our life, but it, rather it is an encouragement as far as the life ahead, what we can do, how we can speak for those that are unborn, how we can speak for those who are in their last days, but that they be treated with gentleness and respect and that young unborn children be treated and be given safety and hope. I saw a little bit about the news. A young father, 30 years old, uh, led, was one part of the leadership of, yesterday of, 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 of uh, walk, uh, the, not Lutherans for Life in this particular case, but Walk for Life. He was 30 years old. And he talked about his own personal life. He was adopted at the age of three by a young woman who had decided that she was no longer going to keep the baby alive, but then changed her mind. He recently met her. They had corresponded, I guess, on, t on Facebook, but he recently met her outside of a restaurant. And he shared that in his interview, and he knew her immediately, as I'm sure that he, she knew him. Life is precious, and it was good. Life was precious, and it was good. When we take a look at what the graphic artist portrayed and gave us, you notice that the ball, or perhaps better said, the circle, kept bouncing. What was that ball? I guess it depends upon our interpretation, and I certainly don't want to judge for everybody or, or the artists, but it would appear to me that when the ball, which was in front of the tomb, rolls away, it's representing Christ, isn't it? Christ emerged. We're going to try something. Trevor has worked hard with me on this, and so we're going to try to stop it at various times and just look at what flowed before us in that two-minute section. can't back it up, can you? Okay. There. Let the earth sp uh, sprout vegetation. God saw that it was good, and the birds fly above the earth. God created man in his own image. And God said it was good. Creation. This, and this, and this, and this. Our eternity. And God saw that it was good. And God came into this world so that our eternity is with Him. That is the 
best story, and God is good. Ability to change, to grow, that separates plants. The ability to grow, change, that separates plants and animals from things like water or rocks. That is life, but even more. The period of time when a person is alive. Now, I ask you, what is happening here as the ball or circle comes and smashes? I'm not sure. But I believe the period of time when a person is alive, that was the second one, and then finally the experience of being alive. Now let's see the crashing again. Certainly one way of identifying the circle that comes crashing and that puts apart everything that was up there on the screen is that it is God sending Christ into this world. And then there's a the community of believers. And then we see the tomb, which is empty. And the tomb that is empty is the answer to our question. How do we survive in a world which is difficult in a world which has so many challenges, in a world where there are so many people who have not been blessed with the grace and with the understanding have refused to believe that the Creator is who we worship. Benito was a woodcarver. He had this special gift that God had given him. He could create things that looked like they were alive. And he gave this doll to his daughter. And I called the doll... Elise. I could have called them both Elise, but the Tao was Elise because Elise, which was the most, was passed through the centuries, through family to family to family, and so they would cherish the memory of the woodcarver who created. Now, the, cher the, cher the memory or the thought or the understanding of the Creator who created all things is who we cherish, who we love, who has given us this determination to fight for what is right as far as life is concerned, to do it in a way of reflection, to do it in a way which teaches, not by anger, not by force, not by violence, not by accusations, not by being judgmental, but simply saying God is good. It is good. I'm going to end this with something that is perhaps the most difficult challenge that I have given to you in the past. I'm going to ask you to think of a time when you had this feeling, this perhaps you didn't recognize it till it was after, that's my case, but where you had this feeling where God is passed on to your loved ones. And this is a time when perhaps you will see in the future, especially as children, that special time. I have an example. An example is this. It's a little distorted. But you see the man on the right, he's easy to identify. He has a cigar in his mouth. That's my father. This is over 50 years, well, not quite 50 years ago. The little girl who's dressed up in her Easter dress or Easter outfit is my daughter, our daughter, Sarah. And the basket is the Easter basket. It's a collection of the egg which is being held in her hand. Now, for me, and there are those that ideas and the thoughts that you have, and I challenge you to have that, you see the connection between the generations. You see the connection over 
the Easter egg, eternal life. And so, on that particular day, I can see where God, in this, in this part of Missouri, where God was looking over us, and the Spirit was certainly there. When we look at what David said, that is, King David, he perhaps put it in the best possible way. For you formed my inward parts. You knitted me together in my mother's womb. I praise you, for I am fearfully and wonderfully made. Wonderful are your works. My soul knows it very well. Allie, the marionette, had to be taken care of. And by, because she was being taken care of, she lasted through, through decades. And she was brought out every time. And, she was, and, she, and the children would learn to, to, let her, to uh, learn to make her dance and have joy. That is our life. Let your life be full of joy. Let your life be a life of dancing. In God's name. God saw everything that he made, and behold, it was very good. Wonderful are your works. My soul knows it very well. And in God's name we say,